I met Martin way back in 1980. I attended one of his conferences because at the time he was making some unusual forecasts. They were often accurate to the day. He was actually forecasting that there would be a crash in the stock markets in 1987. It was outrageous because nobody was possibly contemplating the kinds of things that he was talking about. And uh, in October of 1987, lo and behold, the stock markets had one of their worst collapses ever. And as the market was collapsing, he also put out a report saying that the markets would recover by the end of 1989 to new highs. And everybody thought he was nuts. When I started working at Bloomberg in September of 99, Marty was accused of the $3 billion Ponzi scheme. Marty has held for seven years with drug dealers, with terrorists. He's held with the worst of the worst. No one has ever held for civil contempt for that law. I mean, Marty never reached the point where he presented a defense in court. You're with me? Marty is held in jail from 2000 until 2006, not because he was convicted of a crime, but because he's in a standoff with the government. I can tell you what happened. I can tell you that Marty says his guilty plea was coerced. I can tell you that after Marty's guilty plea, he was beaten by a fellow inmate in MCC. I can tell you that Marty was held in isolation. They said he did, they said in the paper, said they stole so many billions of dollars. And he said, I didn't do any of that, Mom. I didn't steal nothing, he said. So I believed my son. I can tell you that Marty says he doesn't have the assets. I can tell you that there are people who will swear to Marty. I can tell you that there are people who will swear that he's a criminal. Um, if you're asking me, was it right that Marty pled guilty? You're gonna have to ask Marty. Pi is the absolute perfect circle. It's a mathematical discovery that goes back into ancient times, like the Egyptians discovered pi. It's the way energy moves. It is why we were born, we live and we die. It is ultimate knowledge of the grand unified theory, or others call it the theory of everything. I did not expect it to be that precise. And I think it drove the government nuts because they wanted a list of all my clients worldwide so they could prove I was manipulating the world economy. Not, that, not just New York or a market, the whole world. So my lawyer went in the court, he says, Your Honor, where's there a statute that says somebody can't manipulate the world economy if he wants to? And the judge laughed. I mean, it's ridiculous. The, whole, the theory's ridiculous. If it's me manipulating the world, put me in, you shut me up, should stop, right? It didn't stop. Their idea is that I stand up and I say, sell Russia. And all 25,000 people run out and do exactly what I say like it's a robot. I mean, this is how these people think, like a, a you know, like French Connection movie or something. I, I don't really know, it's really bizarre. But human, kind, human nature is not like that. I mean, I, I can say something. doesn't mean everybody in that audience is going to go out and do something. It's crazy. It was about four or five FBI people. And they're walking around. That was very embarrassing, because on their back, they had FBI. <laughs> yeah. I'm Harry. Nigel you know Coates. Finally get to meet. That's great. Strong guy, huh? It's good he is back in as he was. And he still knows his stuff. He has a very good memory. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. 
So I'm curious to see what the reaction of these people will be. And this is the first conference he does. So maybe people think, what is he talking about? And then he comes to the point where they say, oh yes, why didn't I think of this? It makes so much sense. That's what he was always good at. And still is. Perfect. So, so what, what do we know about the people in the audience? Are they uh, <clears throat> traders, the economists, the, who are they? really wired everybody so be careful what you say. Uh, <coughs> I'm Martin Armstrong. As you probably noticed there's a film crew running around here to shock Europe. The reason we have this crisis is because since World War II they basically have just had this idea that they can borrow year after year after year, never have to pay a damn thing back. And the only country I have found so far that ever actually paid anything it was Romania in 1980. That's it. It's the only exception I have found since going back to 6000 BC. And I liked what Herbert Hoover wrote. He basically said that capital acted like a, a loose cannon of a deck on a ship in the middle of a hurricane. It was shooting off in every which direction so fast they couldn't form a committee quick enough to even find out what was going on. So every time the government intervenes, it prevents the free market from actually resolving the problem, it actually seems to prolong it. For example, you see Germany imposing austerity upon Greece. What is, is taking place is that once they begin to, to draw some first blood from Greece, they start immediately looking around. They go, well, wait a minute, look at Italy, and look at Spain, look at Portugal, look at this. Germany has a choice. We either default on absolutely everything, uh, in which case I think we're going to end up in war, or we inflate out. Unfortunately, when you have politicians making these decisions, we end up with what we got. And now we've gotten to the point, even Germany couldn't sell all of its bonds. Now what? Now we're at the point of a sovereign debt crisis. Who's going to bail them out? There isn't anybody left. This thing just reaches the edge and just goes, boom, wonder, done with Europe. Then they're gonna look around and say, okay, who's next? I suspect it probably will be Japan. They don't know Marty because they either have to kill him because he's not going to give up. He won't give up? No, he, no. He definitely not. That all happened in September, I remember that still vividly. Because in May we just wanted to buy a Swiss bank. I had the owner sitting next to Piccadilly Circus in the hotel waiting to meet us. He said, look, I can't do that now. I have so many problems in Japan, Harry. I need to take care of those. What that Japan? was the beginning of the end, I think. We had a pin in the corner and they put him in a hole and uh, said, you're going to spend 135 years in jail. Yep. Are you ready for a dinner? I mean, the first time when they threw me in the hole with the damn terrorists. Um, what and, terrorists uh, were they? Oh, all of them. There were about 40 of them then. The first trade, World Trade Center, the Millennium Terrorists. Uh, I mean, all, they were all collectively. I do that. <laughs> Please um, go up. I think <laughs> the real. They were, you know, praying five times a day, you know. The guys actually drew the World Trade Center on the wall in their cell with planes going into it one year before. You got probably a third of the unit facing death penalty for one thing or another. It's actually good because what happens is uh, you could put a radio down on that chair, nobody is going to touch it. Huh. Absolutely nobody. <laughs> Nobody's going to change that channel without asking, do you mind, should we change the channel? Right, okay. Right. It's so respectful. Sure. Um, it's not what you see in the movie crap at all. That's nonsense. That feeling of being treated unjustly, how long does that last? It never goes away. In MCC in New York, you're in a high-rise building. So then I walked out in the backyard and it was raining. 
I was out there. <laughs> kind of like that scene, uh, I think, in, in Shawshank Redemption. And everybody's like, what the hell are you doing? It's raining. It's just the first time I felt rain in seven years. <laughs> it was wild. It was, that was good. <laughs>